Hey everybody, it's Brian here. Hope you're having a great day. I'm awake, are you? And if you are, you know what's going on. And what's going on is we're about to be raptured. Is it gonna be Rosh Hashanah? I don't know. I really don't know. All I know for sure is we're living in the last days and boy are we in the last days and prophetic events are happening every moment speaking of which right now Mir Safadi on telegram posted that united states has warned israel that iran is preparing for a ballistic a ballistic missile and drone attack a massive one against israel in the next 12 to 24 hours and as you know israel invaded southern lebanon last night with ground forces and they're fighting as i speak I, I would I would venture to say there's some significant events going on prophetically right now as I'm making this video. And is it a coincidence that all these what's going on in the Middle East is going on all at the same time with the weather events, the political upheaval, all this other stuff going on at the same exact time in human history? They're talking about World War Three every day. I said this yesterday, I'm going to keep saying it. Now Israel's on the threat of a massive rocket barrage from Iran. Iran has to save face because its proxies are getting beat. Hamas is almost completely decimated. Um, Hezbollah in the north is being attacked and is being is being taken out. The Houthis, they just got attacked the other day, just yesterday I think it was, um, by the U.S. and by Israel. So this whole thing is heating up the middle east is a powder keg it's just going to get worse <clears throat> excuse me so let's look at this article really quick this is from amir safadi uh this was just posted not too long ago breaking news <clears throat> excuse me urgent breaking news iran is preparing to launch a massive rocket attack on israel the u.s has informed israel and the retaliation is imminent viewers are called to urgent prayer as israel braces for potential barrage of missiles and drones <clears throat> excuse me um this is a, another one he sent another article um pair a short article here but par this is uh shows israeli defense uh, commanders in a room preparing for an iranian attack defense minister galat and chief of staff have a assessing the situation at this time with the head of the defense forces major general um, so they're meeting right now on how they're going to take care of this. Folks, saints, I try to, on this channel, just say, say it as it is. I don't try to sugarcoat anything. The tribulation is about to start. And if you're pre-trib, like I am, and many of you are. Our blessed hope in Titus 2.13 is about to come for us. Is it Rosh Hashanah, which is tomorrow? I don't know. I would never say for sure. It seems like a high likelihood, but who knows? We don't know. The Father knows. Not even the Son knows, but the Father knows. But on the other side of that coin... God has given us signs for the last days so the generation that would live in the last days would know that the coming of his son was very near, even at the door. Do we see those signs? Yes, we do. I just read some signs to you. These signs are pointing to the tribulation, which the rapture happens before that. Is it in the next 24 to 48 hours? I don't know. I hope so. I would love to see all you guys up there. I'm wore out. I know many of you are wore out. And your life may be going good. You may have all your bills paid and, and everything may be going great. But you're just like, I'm ready to get out of here. I am. I know you are. We're, we're about to leave. And this is just another sign. A huge sign. A major sign. These players are mentioned in the book of Ezekiel 38 and 39. These are biblical players of prophecy. Warring against Israel. Wow. I, I always wondered how the last days would look right before the rapture. And now we're seeing what it looks like. 
is playing out right before us. All the other prophecy channels, the watch men and watch women on the, the other channels are saying the same thing. I've watched them too. I get encouraged by them too. And they're saying the same thing that I'm saying. The rapture is about to happen. Is it Rosh Hashanah? I don't know. But whenever it is, we are soldiers of God's army. Men and women of God out there, saints of the Most High, talking to you, talking to me. We fight until there's no more fight left. We keep persevering until we don't have to persevere because we're with him. If it's the next two days, praise God. If it's not the next two days, praise God. God's still saving people. I watched, I read the comments in the last 24 hours. A lot of people, a lot of you guys, you want your family to be saved. I know, I want to go. I have family members that aren't saved. I have co-workers that aren't saved. I have friends that aren't saved. I want them saved. I want to go, but I want them saved. So if we don't go, it's a blessing because our family has more time to accept the Lord. If we go, we're blessed because we're with him and God can save them during the seven years. The largest revival in human history for believers is during the seven year tribulation. More people get saved in those seven years than did since Christ until that time. Even in the midst of all hell, God pours out his spirit. He's gracious. He doesn't have to do anything. This, this, this. God, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, he had no obligation to do anything. He could have got, just started completely over with mankind. He could have got rid of Adam and Eve and started completely over or done nothing. But his mercy and his grace, graciousness and his kindness and love. That's why we're here. Because he's merciful and gracious and he loves us. He fixed the sin issue with Jesus. And if you're watching this channel and you don't know Jesus in your heart, you've never asked him to come into your heart and to be your Savior and Lord. I'd say right now is a really good time. Because if you're left behind and we're gone in the next 48 hours, you're going to enter a time called the tribulation time, the time of Jacob's trouble. I don't care how much prepping you can do. It's not going to help. It'll help a little. Don't get me wrong. But you're going to go through the hardest time this humans ever have gone through on this planet. And there's a good chance you're going to be dead within the next year or less. It's not going to be good. So don't wait. Do it now. I'm going to look at a scripture here. First John chapter 5, starting at verse uh, 10. The one who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has the son has the life. He who does not have the son of God does not have the life. You don't have the son of God living inside of you, the Holy Spirit indwelling you. You haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, to come into your life. His sacrifice on the cross, he didn't have to do that, but he willingly gave up his body. He willingly went through that. He could have called down a whole legion of angels and set up the kingdom right there and said, I'm done with this, but he didn't do that. He did exactly what the father was telling him to do, even unto death on the cross. If you're out there and you're watching this and you don't know the Lord, I'd even go far as to say this because who knows how much time we, this might be my last podcast I ever do on this planet. I don't care if you've been in church for 50 years. If you haven't asked Jesus in your heart, you're going to hell. I don't care if you're a deacon or a pastor, an elder, a 
Bible scholar, if you're just going to church to go to church and you think you're saved because you grew up in a Christian home or you think you're saved because you've been in church all your life, you're fooling yourself right into the gates of hell. You need to reevaluate your life and make sure you're saved. Believe that Jesus died, buried, and rose again on the third day. His blood, his sacrifice on that cross, paid for your sins and my sins forever. You need to have faith and believe that and ask him to come into your body to be your Savior and your Lord. He will send the Holy Spirit. He'll come inside you, and you'll be sealed until the day of redemption. When's the day of redemption? Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. In 1 John 5.11, starting at verse 13, these things, the same passage I just read, going to the next verse. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. I doubted my salvation for many decades. Grew up in a Baptist church, taught the word, grounded in the word, very young. But I always doubted my salvation. I finally had to come to grips with this about 25 years ago. You want to know you have salvation? Read John, 1 John 5, 11 through 13. He's writing to believers here that are doubting who they are in the Lord. A lot of you are doubting. You won't say it to your friends or your family, but you're doubting. Well, first of all, if you're worried that you're not saved, you're probably saved in the first place because if you weren't saved, you wouldn't be worried about it. So I finally had to come to grips with it in my own life. I finally had to say, Lord, I believe this with all my heart. I've asked you to come in my heart in my life. This is years and years ago. That, that doubt was gone. Don't you know the enemy wants to make you doubt? He tries to make you doubt God's love. Well, if God loved you, why are you going through this? If God's protecting you, then why did you get hurt in this car accident? If God provides for you, then why did you lose your job? That's the enemy speaking to you. That's not God. That's not God. And God is about, the Father, is about to send his son to this planet to remove us. And if you're a believer, and you believe what I just read and what I just said, but God says in his word, you're going to go to heaven, whether you like it or not. <laughs> whether you're looking for the rapture or not, you're going to go in the rapture. And I, I've, I've read the um, comments the last 24 hours. A lot of people, I'm this, I'm that. I'm leading people astray. Ha I'm doing what the Bible says. Looking for the blessed hope. We're commanded to look for the rapture. We're commanded. There's a reward given, a crown of righteousness given to those in 2 Timothy 4, 8, to who those who are loving his appearing, a crown of righteousness. Not just to me, Paul says, but to all those who are looking for and loving his appearing. Well, that tells me those people are looking for his appearing. They're loving that, that they're going to see him. We're going to see God. You realize, think about this today. With all the stuff going on in this planet, and there's a lot. And a lot in your own lives, right? There's a lot going on in your lives. Uh, just imagine, and I don't know when the rapture is going to happen. People out there are saying it's going to happen for sure in Rosh Hashanah. I'm not going to say that. We may be here next year. I don't know. I just know the times we're living in and the signs that we're seeing are pointing to the tribulation to start any moment. The rapture happens first. But think about this. It's just say... In the next 48 hours, you are going to see the Son of God face to face. Physically, face to face. And in the next 40 hour, 48 hours, you could not only see the Son face to face, God the Father face to face. And not only that, all the angels, all the saints that have gone before us, and the heavenly kingdom, you'll be walking on streets within 48 hours made of gold. No public works up there fixing potholes. <laughs> There's no potholes on the streets of heaven. There's no homeless camps on the streets of heaven. There's no riots on the streets of heaven. 
There's no racial upheaval on the streets of heaven. You and I could soon be walking on those streets. Is it in the next two days? I don't know. I wish I knew. If I knew that, I'd buy a Powerball. <laughs> and maybe God would give me the six numbers for that. I don't know. It's another story. I don't know that. Nobody knows that. I just know. I, I, I go by the signs I see. I try to be walk by the spirit, but use my brain at the same time, a little bit of logic and saying, well, this is happening. This is happening. This is happening. This is happening. And it says in the scriptures that in the last days, this would happen. And it's happening just like the scripture said. It's pretty obvious. And it says that we're going to be taken away before this time of destruction comes upon the earth. And all this stuff is happening. And Jesus says in Luke 21, look up, your redemption draws nigh. I'm looking up. <laughs> I'm totally looking up. Why wouldn't I look up? Saints, all this stuff going around us has been increasing. Nothing is going away. The good old days were yesterday. You remember the good old days of COVID? <laughs> Alone together? Remember those days? Those look like great days compared to what's living right now and what's going to come. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are all new creations. When you got saved, whenever that was in time, God changed your DNA, I believe. You are a born again, spirit filled brother and sister of God who's going to live in heaven forever. God changed you in that moment. You are already seated in the heavenlies. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. Nobody can go up there and say, yeah, where's that guy, Brian, that guy, you know, the three-person guy, and you know, me, myself, and I, where's that guy? I'm racing him out. <laughs> oh, can't do it. Can't do it. You have to get by, you have to go past God to get to it. I don't think that's going to happen. You're saved, you're saved. Like it or not, you're saved. Does it mean you've had a perfect life living for the Lord? Maybe not. None of us have had a perfect life. None of us. We always compare ourselves to other people. Well, look how they're doing. Man, their marriage is great. They're, they has got a great job. He's got money. He's got this. You know what? You don't know. We don't know what people are going, really going through. People lie. People put up a front. But you know who knows? God knows. In a humble and contrite heart, God will not despise. He loves us. God the Father has gone through a lot to get us to this point. He sent his son. He gave up his son on a cross two days ago. A thousand years is about a day and a day is about a thousand years. Two days ago to the Lord. At one point, the father could not look at his son because he was hideous. Why was he hideous, Brian? Because all our sins were on him. He had to actually just look away. I can't look at him. The first time in eternity ever he could not look at his son. How would that make you feel? And what did Jesus say? Father, why have thou forsaken me? But the greatest words ever spoken, ever, it is finished. And because he said those words 2,000 years ago, two days ago, now we're looking for the rapture to happen any moment. And we are in his kingdom. We are written down in his Lamb's book of life. Because he said those words. It is finished. And we are almost finished living on this planet as we know it. Is it in two days? I don't know. All I know is it's really close by the signs that are happening everywhere. So saints, as you go on in this day, and I know a lot of you, including myself, is like, I'm, 
I start thinking about the rapture could happen tomorrow or the next day. And I'm like, oh, it just overwhelms me. It's hard to work. <laughs> it's hard to do anything. But you know what? He's about to come back. And he will redeem us. He promised. And God keeps his promises. So for saints, love you guys. Welcome all you new saints of God. And those of you who just tune in this channel, welcome to this family of believers that are on the ark waiting for our Lord. And he's about to return. Guys, I'll see you in the clouds very soon. Your brother Brian out. Bye-bye.